In my last video, I showed you these carrots. I told you they weren't quite ready. I like to get some uh, nice frilly leaves first. And we now have those. So these are ready to harvest. They're actually maybe one day longer than I really prefer. So you can see how those frilly leaves are sticking up just the smallest amount more than I really prefer, but they're, these are pretty good. Here's that arugula that I unstacked. I think I called this broccoli. I got the arugula and broccoli messed up in my last video, but it's easy to see which is which now. Some speckled pea shoots. Here's some radish that needs to be watered. It's about the perfect time to water them right now. Here's some broccoli. You might remember that I had one section of poor germination. It's kind of coming into it. This amaranth is also ready. More radish that also needs to be watered. Here's that amaranth that really didn't look all that great in the last video, but it looks pretty good right now to start. You know, it's not ready. Here is my carrots. New, a new batch. You can see there's a little bit of mold there. I'm going to have to hit this with some uh, hydrogen peroxide. I don't normally have that issue, but when I grow carrots, I stack them until they're all kind of sprouted pretty good, and then I just keep a humidity dome on them until they're about an inch or so tall. That helps shed the seed hole, and uh, then I just put them directly under light. I bought them, water them from the bottom, and uh, they do well. Here are those two trays of beets that I was showing you that looked absolutely fantastic. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different for a little bit of fun. You've all seen these carrots and you've seen my beets. I'm curious if you can guess what the uh, harvested quantity is going to be for each of these trays. So I have these one and a half or 12 ounce fluid ounce containers. It holds one and a half uh, ounces of microgreens pretty much perfectly in my opinion. Um, any microgreen I've tried a 16 ounce clamshell holds two ounces. A 12 ounce clamshell holds one and a half ounces just fine. I have had people argue with me about that, so take it for what that's worth. But I'm going to harvest up the carrots first. I'm not going to show the whole harvesting process, but go ahead and write down in the comments. If you think you know how many ounces there are of each of these trays, put it in there right now, and I want to see if you're right. So I'm going to start with the carrots and the carrots are pretty easy. There's not really any seed holes to worry about. Just dive right in. It's a really nice tray of carrot. Scissors are a little bit slow. You could go a little bit faster if you use the knife. I've tried a knife before and I just didn't care for it. Um, These smell amazing. Now you're not gonna get a huge harvest or huge uh, weight with the carrots. They're very light. Um, I actually typically don't sell them on their own. I usually include them in a mix. My hands are clean, and so are the scissors, for anybody who's worried about that. Came to about the point where I like to check and see where I'm at. Zeroing out my scale. 1.1 1 .1 ounces. So it's going to take half a tray to get one and a half ounces. So if you're good at math, you would know that means about three ounces in this tray. Probably don't have to be that good at math to know that. One 
1.5 ounces exactly. These dart containers, they have a uh, tamper resistant edge. So if someone tries to open them, it rips that, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in checking out these containers. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest up the rest of this tray. I'm expecting that to be another one and a half ounces. And then we'll get going on the beets. If you guessed three on the ounces of carrots, you'd be pretty much spot on. We ended up with 2.95 ounces. So one of these is 0 0.05 ounces light. I think that's acceptable. And that tray I just took down, the same thing with the beets when I'm done. I dump those in a pile and my chickens come along. I've got like eight chickens, I think. Uh, and they're all free range. They'll come by and they'll just destroy it. Like it's not even a pile when it's done. Beets. These are a little bit more tricky to harvest. This is a fantastic tray though. So um, it won't be too, too hard. As I go, I like to brush off the bottom to make sure there's no uh, soil or anything stuck down on the bottom end of where I harvested. And then I also go and I make sure I remove any seed holes. I don't put any beet seed holes in the, the uh, package because you wouldn't want to bite down on that. Same as with the carrots, we're just going to dive in. So I get myself a nice little handful here of beets. Just do this, just kind of sprinkle out any like cut leaves or little things. These are a really nice, nice tray, so it's not so bad. Pop off any of the seed holes. Try not to get stung by the yellow jacket that's all over my fingers. Apparently yellow jackets like beets. And that's it. Just keep going like that. It does take time. Beets are time consuming. The better your job you do growing them, the, uh, the easier they are to harvest. This isn't terrible at all. I've I've had to harvest way worse than this, but it is a time consuming product. And I don't fret too much about if a seed hole does sneak through. Uh, one or two probably will. It's not a huge deal, but preferably have none at all. Another reason to not want the seed holes is that uh, your soil, or in this case, cocoa core, will tend to uh, stick to them. And so you can end up with like a dirty, dirty container. And I try to avoid that the best I can. Sounds like my chickens are getting excited. They know they're getting some microgreens. Now I usually don't wear gloves when I'm harvesting. Sometimes I will. Um, I ran out of latex gloves. Beets is one that it's a good idea to wear gloves just so you don't dye your fingers. Um, there's also sanitary reasons for wearing gloves, but you're touching microgreens, you're touching your scissors, you're touching everything. I avoid touching my face and stuff. Like I use my you know, side of my hand to lift up my glasses. Um, if you're not okay with, with that, wear gloves. But like I said, dyeing your fingers is the, the main reason that you like to wear them when you're doing beats. When I started recording this video, I thought I was in a nice shady spot. That's quickly changed. Um, it's not shady at all. I recommend you do not work in direct sunlight like I am right now. But seeing how we're already here, we're going to power through and we're just going to continue on. I'm 
beets are a little bit more dense. They're kind of a hardier, heavier plant. So they, they do weigh up a little bit quicker. We're gonna see where we are right now. I don't think we're at one and a half ounces yet, but we'll, we'll give it a try and see. I'm guessing about an ounce. 1.15, so we need a little bit more to finish this tray up. Now, as you're watching this go and you're seeing how tedious it is and how much of a pain it is to do this, just know that uh, beets are probably the worst of all microgreens to harvest. Uh, it doesn't get much worse than this. A close second could be sunflower, depending on how well you got the seed hulls off the sunflower. But I think that's going to do it right there. So about a third of the tray and we got one and a half ounces, 1.55, so just slightly over. I'm gonna move this so it's not in the direct sunlight while I harvest the rest. Before I show you just how much we got, let's see what microgreensmaster.com says with its seed calculator. This is my website. First, we're gonna go to the seed variety and we're gonna find bull's blood beets. We'll pick just the standard ones, not the organic. Organic's a lot more expensive, but feel free to use them. We're gonna select one pound of seed because I wouldn't buy it in any less than that. Switch to ounces instead of grams, and you can see five, gram, five ounces is what the calculator said, but we're gonna switch it to four because that's what we got. And you can see it costs a dollar and seven cents or a dollar and eight cents per ounce of microgreens based on seed cost. Let's do the same thing for carrots. Once again, we will select one pound. Carrot seed's pretty cheap. And again, we were a little bit under, so we'll go with three ounces instead of the four that's in the calculator. And it costs 17 cents or 18 cents for an ounce of carrots based on seed cost. All right, so we ended up with essentially three ounces of the carrots and four ounces of the beets. Thought we'd have a little bit more of the beets than that, but that's pretty close to what I was guessing. Um, this one here has one ounce in it. It's, that's why it's still open, because I'm gonna cut just a little bit out of that other tray I have, just to make it a full container. Did any of you guess right? Just kind of curious. If you did, you're the real star today. I'd go and I'd brag on social media. I'd probably give this video a thumbs up, probably like it, subscribe be really excited. All my seeds come from True Leaf Market. I am proudly an affiliate of True Leaf Market, have been for over three years now. Um, it's just who I use, it's what I like. If you use the link in the description to purchase seeds, then I will earn a small commission. It won't cost you anything extra at all. Appreciate if you do. If you don't want to use my link, go directly to True Leaf Market and purchase that way. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.